On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1962 and 1964 to have a listen to Elvis and Terry Stafford singing Suspicion. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So this is one of those specific requests where I've been asked to look at two versions of the same song and the person requesting this video asked me why Elvis Presley didn't have a huge hit with this, but then Terry Stafford did just a couple of years later. So we're going to be jumping into it as we normally do. And there are going to be links in the description below if you guys want to watch the songs, listen to them the whole way through without me interrupting it, because I will be jumping into these because it is an analysis video. We're going to be starting by listening to Elvis's release from 1962. So let's jump into this and see how he gets on. I'm still not certain that you love me Every time you hold me I'm still not certain that you care Oh, you keep on saying you really, really, really love me Do you speak the same words to someone else when I'm not there? Suspicion Torments in my heart Suspicion Keeps us apart Suspicion Why torture me? Every time you call me And tell me we should meet tomorrow I'm just going to jump in here Because I hadn't heard this song Actually before hearing it Neither Elvis's version or Terry's version. So it was interesting to listen to from that perspective, hearing a new song. With Elvis's voice, a huge part of his sound was his vibrato because it's so unique and you'll see it. But interestingly, with this verse, because it's na 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 it's jumping all over the place so you never really get a held note where Elvis's voice really does stand alone because of that vibrato that he had it was so wide it's so dramatic and so controlled but let's listen on every time you kiss me I'm still not certain that you love me love me and he gets a little bit of it. It, it in the end you can see how many semitones we're covering you know three or four you usually get with Elvis maybe a bit more and we've got one two three you're always going to get this with singers who've got a natural vibrato it's always going to cover the same kind of pitch and when it is natural sometimes it, it changes gets a little bit wider with age but yeah Elvis's voice just always had this Let, let's listen on Every time you hold me, I'm still not certain. And then there, I mean, it's great because that's not even a note. He just went, me every time you ho. And he kind of goes, oh. He just lets his voice drop down. Have a listen to that again. I mean, there's so much expression in this. Every time you hold me, I'm still not certain that you care. He got a little bit there. Care. A little wobble. Oh, you keep on saying you really and just to mention from a range perspective, because we're going na 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 you know, we're, we're covering so much and you can see how this is all joined up. When I said about singing phrases, connecting them, sliding, this is all in one breath that Elvis is doing this, connecting all of these notes and covering such a wide range you know we've got an octave going on here just in the verse that top note you can you know, just see it c sharp four here and it'll be the d above that so that d4 is still quite a low note you know in, in, in baritone range but it's then going na 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 you know going all the way down there you know that octave below like i said uh, the b2 there so you know, the D3 would be here. So when I mentioned that, you can see we've gone over an octave as we've descended there. But let's listen on. 
Do you speak the same words to someone else when I'm not there? And again, I mean, we're getting this vibrato at the end of lines, but it's not a composition that I would say really plays to Elvis's strengths because his voice, that vibrato, was so unique and it was so dramatic. I know that when Elvis released this song, it was on the B side of a single and it was Kiss Me Quick which was the A side, you know, <laughs> when I say the A side and the B side, maybe younger viewers won't know, but when you released a single, it was on a record and <laughs> you had two sides to it, so you could flip it over. But anyway, the A side was, I'm sure everybody knows who's watching this, but the A side was the focus, that was the single. And because they just had another side, they put a, another song. So when you flipped it over, you could listen to another one. So this was on the B side, it wasn't the focus. So I think this is why it would have flown under everybody's radar because Kiss Me Quick was such a huge hit. And you know, it's all about timing as well. And yeah, it, putting resources into one song and then not another song and getting it in front of people, getting it on the radio, like I said, on TV was a huge part, especially uh, with Elvis, when he could perform it on TV, obviously the crowd would go crazy, but it means that you're now reaching a huge audience rather than just the, the radio audience. So, you know, combining those two things together uh, would be very good for your sales. Another thing that I mentioned is that the mix it's very heavy instrumentally, and what I mean by that is Elvis's voice isn't really popping out in the verses. In the chorus, it's pretty much okay because we've got you know the backing vocals in there as well, and you know we hear the tagline of the song. But when we're into the verse, have a listen to this. Every time you call me and tell me we should meet tomorrow, you hear how. You hear the beginning of the line, which is quite prominent, but then when Elvis relaxes and you know brings down that dynamic, the instrumentation is still at the same level, so his voice almost dips below. So sometimes it's difficult to hear what he's singing. I can't help but think that you're meeting someone else tonight. I mean it is borderline you know, at the same level as the instrumentation, especially when you notice the S's coming out. So the S's stand out more than the words, which is just a great example because those will cut through, of course, because of the nature of the sound. But when you're trying to listen out for lyrical content and appreciating the quality of Elvis's voice, it's quite difficult to make out sometimes. Suspicion. So yeah, when we get into the chorus, it's now more prominent. I think what's happened is that in the studio, Elvis has sung the verse intentionally in a different place dynamically, but there hasn't been, you know, enough compression maybe added to his voice or the, the mix just isn't quite where it needs to be in terms of compensating for Elvis's delivery. The way that he holds notes, I mean, it's a huge thing. I know that he sang, you know, up-tempo numbers, mid-tempo, slow-tempo, ballads. Whenever I think of Elvis or imagine him singing, it's pretty much always a mid to slow tempo number. So, for example, if just popped into my head, uh, like a bridge over troubled water, his performance of that song when you think about that melody and think about how long the notes are being held for it without a vibrato it would be like a bridge over troubled water there's a when you don't add vibrato to it you're conscious of oh there's a lot of held notes there and that's where when elvis hit a note and had like he would go into his vibrato like a bridge and it'd always be wobbling and and that's his personality so it means that you get to appreciate elvis's personality for a long time in every note and it's certainly not no 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 it's not all over like that so you know that again that could be another thing maybe people didn't really 
lock into this. So let's jump into Terry's version and see what we can see. I'm still not certain that you love me Every time you hold me I'm still not certain that you care Though you keep on saying You really, really, really love me Do you say the same words to someone else When I'm not there? Suspicion Oh, it's my heart so I'm going to jump in here. Not a lot of difference with the arrangement. I think there is a little bit of pushing the tempo here to give it a tiny bit more energy than the Elvis version. And what's really interesting about Terry's voice is have a look at where here this is where Elvis was applying and if I move this over to the right you can just see very quickly that this is where Elvis had a chance to just put a bit of his vibrato on there so when we go over to Terry's version his vibrato doesn't really exist I mean he does have vibrato but I mean it is so subtle that it's not a huge part of his voice listen again I'm still not certain that you care Though you keep on saying you really, really, really love me Do you say the same words to someone else when I'm not there? So, trying now to hear any vibrato, you think, well, there isn't any in there. So let me just take this back, you know, listening to this end part. The same words to someone else when I'm not there. When I'm not there. It's, it's like that. There's no, uh, there's no dramatic vibrato like Elvis has. Now, there's a reason why I think potentially Terry's voice is more suited to this song because he doesn't have the vibrato in his voice. Naturally, that Elvis does. It means that because he's not holding notes, it doesn't matter because Terry's vibrato is not needed in this composition because there's not lots of long held notes where you need to have that, you know, expressive and controlled vibrato. So he's singing this in a way that probably suits the composition a lot more because there's lots of jumping around of the notes. He's just spending time on those notes and you're not losing anything. I think Elvis lost the opportunity uh, to apply vibrato as much as he would have liked in other songs. Terry's voice has such a similar tone to Elvis's and we'll listen to it again. Every time you kiss me, I... So it's, it's placed in this spot where no, it's got that little bit of nasality to it rather than going ah, 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 you know allowing you know the sound to come out of the mouth a lot ah, 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 and it's quite bright when you then go more into a oh, that kind of sound which is basically using your chest voice more and, and getting body in the sound going oh and going oh, 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 oh and doing that kind of thing where you're allowing it to oh, 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 oh actually half turning to a hum if you go oh, 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 oh it's, it's that sound allowing more to come out of your nose so there's nothing coming out of my mouth there but it's it's allowing your voice to go into that place at the end of the line going oh, oh, oh Oh, 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 like that. So you can hear maybe how it, the, oh, that, that body in the sound is starting to disappear when you go up. Oh, 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 like that. So anyway, I mean, I'm explaining this because Terry's doing this with his voice and Elvis did this with his voice. Once you start with this sound of going, oh, 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 oh you can keep that sound in there, 
but you're uh, you're taking this low sound, so it's kind of uh, you know lowering your larynx and going uh, you know to exaggerate it, you know, taking that sound, uh, uh, but keeping it rather than going uh, 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 and allowing it to kind of go up into your head voice, which just sounded a little bit weird. So you're keeping all that chest voice quality in there. Their tone sounds similar with how they are singing how they're producing sound but the huge difference is the the vibrato and the personality the identity that is within that vibrato because obviously terry doesn't have that so when you hear terry singing it his tone is similar how he's making that sound but you know this definitely isn't elvis singing why should our romance just keep on causing me such sorrow see now there I heard everything there. His the, the sorrow, the last word of the line, doesn't disappear into anything. And it's not only the S's that are coming through. We're hearing all of the words. And it's so important, obviously, to hear the lyrical content of the song. But it means that from a mixed perspective, Terry's voice, even though it's the verse, is still sitting on top of everything. It's not kind of dropping below. Why should our romance just keep on causing me such sorrow? Yeah, so there's a significant difference here mix-wise, you know, when we compare it with Elvis's. Why am I so doubtful when I ever you part of sorrow? Oh, I mean, he went a little bit quiet there. Suspicion. Oh, but that was it. So, yeah, it's just right at the end of that second line. But I would say that Elvis's yeah vocal was a little bit lower and uh, it did disappear a little bit more in the mix so i mean it can be the case sometimes that an artist will release an album of you know eight to ten tracks with either three or four singles that they're going to be focusing on uh, performing them on tv and the radio stations will get those singles uh, to play in regular rotation but another artist might listen to the album and think oh i like that song i, I want to have a go at that or they might think that i think that will suit my voice so they record it independently and they might have a huge hit with it, especially if they're concentrating on that single and that's what the record company are doing. So, yeah, it's happened in the past and it will happen in the future as well. Sometimes some songs just suit somebody's voice a little bit more. And other than that, it's just lots of different factors that can come together. Timing is a really important thing as well. It could just be a really good time to release a particular type of song and whether that be the feel of the song or you know what the song's about, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, thank you guys for requesting this particular analysis video for tonight. Keep those suggestions and requests coming in the comment section below. As always, let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock!